Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. This week, I speak with someone from the band Spread Joy. They are a punk band out of Chicago, and they also release their music under Creative Commons, so we talk a bit about that. We talk about how the band started out because of a karaoke barbecue. They just, you'll find out when we talk about it, but it's a great story about how the band got started, how they ended up touring Europe, how they got on a record label, they've been releasing vinyl, and just touring and doing a lot of really great stuff, plus the music videos that they have that you just have to see. So here's that interview starting right now. My name is Brianna. I'm in the band Spread Joy as the vocalist, screamer, sing songer. Right. And you are based out of Chicago, correct? We are. Okay. We're based out of Chicago, although funnily enough, I don't think any of us are, you know, Chicago natives. No? So, oh, no. Yeah, really? I, grew up, uh, I grew up in Atlanta. Um, our, what is this? Our guitarist, he grew up, well, kind of around, but he was more like Alabama based. Okay. Um, Tyler's from Southern Illinois and the drummer and our bassist, Nick, he grew up in Michigan, Detroit area. Okay, well then, how did you guys meet? Like, how did you all get together? That's a strange question. I don't know. I mean, I don't think <laughs> Is it a strange question or is it the most brilliant question you've yeah, ever heard? Oh, wow, connectivity. <laughs> Blew your mind. Uh, actually, I really, this was probably, this was Rady's idea. So he was the one to, he moved to Chicago last of all of us. And just through, you know, when you, when you move someplace new, you kind of have to like jump in. And you're like, we're going to find friends. And, you know, you always, find people that you knew before. Anyway, that's convoluted. Just to say that I feel like essentially at like a, like at a backyard barbecue kind of, I think was the whole start of the thing. Rady's been in bands before, I mean, ever since he was a kid, pretty much. So he knew that he wanted to make music now that he's in this new place, which is understandable. And um, it goes that we were, yeah, at a backyard barbecue and someone brought out a karaoke machine and I chose to sing what was it? Uh, Diamond in the Mind by uh, Leonard Cohen. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm just like, well, I'm doing what everyone knows I do now, but no one really knew then. Yeah. And so I'm just like making my own like way from it being really whatever, as ostentatious as I wanted. Okay. And he was like, oh, dang. So she's not shy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's cool. And I think from there it was like, an assembly job. Um, my partner, Nick, we all, everyone knows that he's a bassist and he's been in lots of other bands and um, our mutual friend, Tyler, you know, he's been drumming in other projects. So it was okay. just sort of like, who's friendly enough and would want to hang out together. Okay. And so basically if you wouldn't have been at this barbecue, you would not have been in the band like this. I think that's probably like, yeah, I would say so. Really? And even then, like he, Raider reached out to me and he was like, well, what do you think? And I was like, honestly, I don't think I want to be in a band, you know, oh, I'm yeah. old now. So <laughs> like, that's stupid. And he's like, well, he's like, he like sends me some um, music that he'd made before. He's like, this is kind of the stuff that I've been working on or like had been working on. Give it a listen, you know, Okay. And it was like a sunny Sunday afternoon. I'm getting wine drunk by myself, listening to all these songs. And I was like, man, it sounds really fun. I was like, all right, I'll do it. And there we go. And you hadn't done any, you haven't been in any bands or anything oh, before no, that? No, no. Yeah, okay. I'm a baby. Okay. Everybody else is, you know, that's always been something that they've kind of pursued as a hobby, but it was never something that I considered for myself or even, yeah, took seriously as a way to spend my time. All right. So. And how long ago was this? I guess we started practicing or like meeting up to practice. It must have been 2019. Okay, so, so right before the, right the before. big shutdown. For sure. Okay. In fact, I think we were like, at a point we were in March of 2020, we were like, okay, like this is like, let's go play some shows. And yeah. then obviously that didn't happen. So we made a record instead. <laughs> all right. So then when you, all right, I'm, I'm trying to order these questions in the way that I want to know them. So you got the barbecue, you got the karaoke machine. Then it's like, let's start a band. I don't know if I want to. Yes, I do. Now we're there. So mm -hmm. 
Now you don't just start making music. I mean, or I guess how did maybe you did? Maybe how did you think... start getting together? Like one as a musician, the finding a practice space. I mean, that's that's well. I guess maybe it's different well, in Chicago. So how did you? Where where were you guys doing this? Where right. were you? Where did you start out? And that's where um, everybody else already being in a band made the decision a lot. There were a lot fewer logistical hurdles because. Yeah, we already had a practice, like we already had an option to get into this practice space from um, Nick and Tyler's other band. So there's space, they're like, okay, well, we'll just jump in there, you know, no okay. big deal. And uh, some of the more veteran Chicago people, Tyler and Nick, they, you know, they knew about these places and it wasn't a big deal. And then it really was, okay, well, what day will we all meet in this room? Brady had some kind of like ditties kind of already thought up mm -hmm. of. And um, I would just like pace around trying to listen to okay. what the song wanted to be about and then sort of fumble my way through it. Well, that was going to be my next question because it's like, all right, it's one thing just to sing and uh, yeah, like you have to come up with lyrics. Nobody goes, well, I guess in the movie, it always seems like in the movies they go, here, sing this, and then the person does it, and they become, you know, and one of those, you know, and suddenly they're the leader of the band, and it's like, but you didn't do nothing. Um, no. Sorry, that seemed really ranty. Um, no, I but... like it. <laughs> Gotta stay. <laughs> Give me convictions. So, so what was your foray into actually going? Okay, now I have to sing along to this music. Like, like what was mm -hmm. what was your process? The oh. pacing back and forth I like. By the way, I do that too. Oh, it's yeah. like my brain has to poop, and, <laughs> and I can't. <laughs> I just get uncomfortable, and I have to pace back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like pace. I'm like talking to myself. I'll think. About, I'll think. About I got something. I'm like, no, that's not it. That's not it. But <laughs> um, I am a visual artist by like my own admission and um I, you know I grew I wrote I write poetry so I think some aspects of like it was just sort of how to tweak the creative process for something that is will be replayed you know and essentially performative when you're out on stage so it was just like a small change you know because I am naturally curious and there are like larger concepts that I really spend a lot of my time thinking about and it was just, okay, well, how am I going to illustrate or ask this question and come to some conclusion in a, you know, via sound than maybe mm -hmm. sculpture or other materials? Because um, I think, honestly, a lot of my uh, fine artwork, it, I'm asking similar questions of myself or like, you know, space and art interactions between people or, you know, sort of disturbing and disheartening ways that you know we treat each other or systems of oppression that you know you just kind of have to deal with and in that way writing a punk song felt more appropriate than maybe some other things that i would was trying to discuss okay that was cool i found that cathartic yeah no. <laughs> i could see that <laughs> actually i want to know about the art that you're doing what is your like what is your artistic background um i went to school for printmaking oh really okay mm -hmm. and um printmaking and i had a minor in poetry or creative writing <laughs> so that was my schooling um unfortunately soon after i graduated well i was still doing some prints but also the printmaking process can be a little bit cost prohibitive oh my god yeah. you have to have like the press or you, you know you need to like pay for the memberships and um Right out of college, I didn't have as much way to continue some of my larger prints. Mm. How large were they? Oh, some of them were quite large. Um, okay. You know, for me, it's just annoying to set it up at home. That's. <laughs> <laughs> but you're saying like you actually needed something that could I mean, take. Yeah, a I need some bigger prints. I mean, it was fun to make. You could make yeah, like little desktop screen prints is fun and um mono prints if you have like something to kind of roll it out anyway i digress that's just to say that in moving around and moving out and trying to do something different for a while i moved i went to um more like sculptural work okay. and even in my prints i would try to reference something sculptural so it wouldn't necessarily be like 
a flat piece of paper, you know, I could score it or, you know, manipulate the press so that it can create something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway. So I was already into the three dimensional as a, something that was, I was interested in. Anyway, we'll just say that. So I started doing a lot more sculptural work and like adding maybe printed elements on top of it, you know, like small stamps, you know, you can like carve a stamp out of a wine cork and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that human touch. But so yeah, um, tried to play with scale, but it's a bummer when you're moving around so much, mm -hmm. kind of, you make this thing, you're like, ah, oh, it's so cool, but I, it cannot stay in my apartment. It has to go. Okay. Is that why you ended up in Chicago because of school? No, I ended up in Chicago for love. Okay. I was, there was a pause there and I'm like, is she going to say love? She is. <laughs> and isn't that so annoying for someone? Like I always say, I'm like, I'm not a very romantic person. I kind of think that's a little bit blase. And yet when I consider some of the decisions I've done, mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, oh, maybe you, you're chasing something. So well, maybe it is the L word. Anyway, okay. I was living, um, I was living in Germany when I met Nick. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was in another band called Negative Scanner and they were on tour. And um, I spent, you know, whatever, a couple of seasons in Chicago. So I had, you know, I knew some people and I recognized him. And I was like, oh, I'll go to the show. That'll be fun because mm -hmm. whatever, who cares? And uh, yeah, I don't know. Next thing I knew, I just kind of, I liked the guy. So we were long distance for a year or something. Okay. And then you have to make a decision. It's like, you can't be continentally long distance forever it's sort of like a waste of both people's time so if you like somebody be declarative and like go for it or don't and so i went for it and okay. here i am now how would you describe the music that getting back to the music how would you describe the music that you guys make uh when you first started out we had talked about okay the songwriting process mm -hmm. first time coming up with the lyrics but now after that, as you called it, your, uh, what was it? Your wine day drinking or you had a better way of phrasing it. <laughs> I was, it, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. My wine decision to join the band. Yes. And, <laughs> and with the music examples that you were given and stuff, uh, is that the direction that it went? And when it did, like, how did this music style that you have come about and what would you call it? I just asked three questions. I'm sure. sorry about that. Um, I think that. I was already into it. it. His stuff and the stuff, especially in our first album, I think have some strong roots in just like classic post-punk, like classic late seventies, early eighties, lady, female driven post-punk sounds. So that was really easy because I listen, I, I love that kind of stuff anyway. And um, also I think just being like an art school girl, you know, I, those were the, those were the types of influences that I wanted because they were always a lot of those uh, bands. They were kind of questioning what is art, or you know, like what is music, what is sound. How are yeah. we combining these to be abrasive? Because being demure is boring. So mm -hmm. that was easy for me, and it was easy for me to like fill that fantasy. Like, oh, okay, you know, let's pretend we're Hans Applause today, or you yeah. know, you know. Um, but yeah, so. Was it that? Did I even answer a question? That's the sound. 70s, That's the sound. Okay. 70s, early 80s. Um, like I said, I asked three questions. So answer whichever ones. Yeah. yeah. I, I gave you too many to answer, so yeah. I can understand. No, no, no. Yeah. I just to make sure I didn't like go off on a tangent and I got to like read <laughs> what, what is it going on? No, perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing I want to know too so you, you have the sound, you're doing this. When did you play your first show? Hmm. I don't really. Cause that's a different well, thing entirely. Like it's okay to be there with the band and work on stuff and come mm -hmm. up with ideas and collaborate. And then it's like, all right, let's go be in front of people and see if people show up first of all, and yeah. then, you know, actually perform and do it live. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your first show. I don't know if this is the very, very first, my memory is not the best, but one of our very first was, uh, we played at freaking Goner Fest. Oh, okay. <laughs> and loved to that, but that was like, probably our worst show and you know you're like out well, there yeah. other people are milling about we don't know i'm like we don't know what the fuck's going on yeah and um it was a lot of people for such a large hiccup but people didn't mind i mean they got the spirit of it you mm -hmm. know but i think that was really one of our first shows and we we're just like 
all right we'll we'll do it let's go for it okay we were, that was like on for a tour so that can't be tried i don't know i'm gonna ask nick okay i was gonna say who are you looking for i'm looking for the man who knows <laughs> just a no, that's all right i get it I, I was just really curious about the first show because that's how it's because you would never most people it's like they got their first show in like oh we we've been playing out since high school and i've been in 20 bands i was just mm -hmm. curious because you were like I did a karaoke and then I was in a band and then we started playing shows. So I was just like, Oh, it's been a while since I've talked to someone where it's like, Oh yeah, oh, this yeah, was their first name. show. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Most people have to like think way back and you you just have to think back. <laughs> uh, pre -pandemic. Yet the brain, it just doesn't want to go that far. Yeah. But you so, just blocked it out. That's all it is. Maybe have. Yeah. Of course. Right. I, I mean, whatever. I also kind of, I mean, I love performing live. It's really fun. And I also just carry with me this sort of like, it is what it is. You know, I, I don't think I get nervous in the way that maybe other people right. tend to. So I kind of just treat it like, here we go. Yeah. This is more for me. And I'm just glad that you're here <laughs> to like watch it. So <laughs> well, that was the other thing I was asking too. It's like, you just doing the first show. It's always like, are we going to be by ourselves? It's, you know, the classic thing where it's like, you're playing for the other bands. Yeah. That totally. sort of thing. So um, now, <laughs> You also are on uh, Feel It Records, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did you get involved with that? They have a pretty active YouTube channel. They're putting out different videos all the time. So first of all, how did you uh, how did you end up on this this label? Well, slightly convoluted, and maybe Brady would tell it different. I don't know, <laughs> but we ha COVID was in it, and we were like, well, we have all these songs, we can't perform them, so maybe we'll just see if we can just like get it a record. So uh, okay. I'm scrolling through this other YouTube channel called Here Kiri Dia, hmm. and they post all, it's like all, it's like a, like a bigger wealth of all of these other kind of smaller labels of stuff that might be adjacent. So I'm like going through, writing these down, like well, maybe some of these, maybe some of these. Rady comes back, he found a feel it, and he really just like went and wrote, you know, like in the uh, contact me page, you know, yeah. Please comment here, and Rady really just like, hey, we just made these songs. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section. And you, um, you wrote it in the comments. Yeah, he like yeah, like it like on the on the feel it um, website. Okay. You know, Contact us with any questions or concerns about your your purchases or some shit. Yeah. And like that was it. He like posted the our songs to like send out as a little email to him. And a couple of weeks later, he actually responded, Sam. Oh, wow. He responded being, okay, this is really good. Okay. So it is, it feels, what's the word? Uh, well, whatever. In that way, it feels really old school because people don't just take a cold call like that, you know? It was just like a dry run and, right. and it was well received. So it's really a once in a, one in a million shot. You know, yeah. Well, so. and it's now in the age where most comments that I get, or you probably as well, when you get a comment on something, it's always somebody just yeah. like going, Hey, sent you something in your DMS, you know? And it's like some person just trying to go like, I'll get you a million followers. And it's like, okay, person without a website to reference to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why it's also very surprising because most of the time it's like you just ignore those when people yeah, go, hey, you should listen to this. It's right? Like, oh, like says who, you jabroni? Yeah. <laughs> and, even, and even now I think because Feel It, I mean, that was 2020, even in just these few short years, like Feel It has really gained some traction. Sam works super hard. He's got a great ear and a point of view. I don't even know if... You know, like if we did that now, I don't think we would have had a response just because he's so much more busy. Mm. And like he's working so so many other things, you know, he's a, his his role is really going, you okay. know. So it was really kind of like a perfect time. It was time sensitive, obviously sound sensitive, but it was special. I I definitely don't take that for granted when I, looking back on it. Yeah. What kind of benefits and help has being on the label label given you? Like, do they help with uh, touring and booking shows or do they just help with promotion and getting the word out about the band? Like, I guess, what do they do? Sure. Well, uh, not, I think that 
mostly it's about yeah getting the record and being able to distribute it yeah. in a way that isn't super cross cross wow cost prohibitive but he's also just been around forever and he he doesn't necessarily help with booking but if we had a question you know like he helped us get started when we were going to go to tour in europe you know i don't okay. think we would have had the, the jumping off point if it weren't for sam in that regard but otherwise yeah just kind of being the supportive guy he is you know if we've got shows coming up he'll you know post the flyer or um he helped us out to get extra records when we when we go on tour and stuff like that um he helps us with uh um like the music videos if we you know okay i want to ask about the music videos in a second i actually i've been i've been kind of waiting on that one i've been savoring it but you just said the uh when you toured europe so i mean of course that would be amazing and it probably was amazing but setting up a tour in europe like how justifying such a thing like going okay guys we're gonna go play in europe now so hop to you know it's it, so <laughs> how did you how, how did this whole europe tour come about and how was it received it was i found it to be very well received um and it was really fun and you get so much more out of your well, the moment you leave the house, you can really start to do something with your life and, you know, figure out where you are and facilitate that. So being able to every day, you know, kind of reset that in a whole new place, totally different languages, it was very humbling and exciting. So mm -hmm. even if, I think, I think we broke even too. So, which I know oh, isn't okay. necessarily, we may, we may have made like a tittle bit more, but penance anyway. So it was basically a free vacation where we had something to do and a place to stay every night so it was pretty in that way it was awesome and you booked it yourself <sighs> sam got us sam from fila got us in touch with this really hilarious awesome guy in hamburg uh his name is jens and he runs wild wax booking okay and he is actually he's an incredible resource and he's really one of a small handful of um german based bookers, but they, they work really hard to get all, you know, the American punk bands and the Australian punk bands to come and, you know, they've got, they've got their spots. And so it's really seamless. It's very German efficient. Okay. <laughs> it's just like, we're just partying and just getting walling out. But yeah, I think if it wasn't for Sam introducing us to Jens, it wouldn't, it, it would have been terrible to try and work that out, you know, all the way over here. Yeah. So. In case you hear anybody else trying to go, any other punk bands you know, trying to go to Europe, I will give you Jens's info. He is really, that is the man to know. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what I was asking for because I'm like, well, what's that like? How do you do that? So interesting to know, good mm -hmm. good resource there. All right, oh, yeah. and how long were you there? How long did you tour for? I was like three weeks. So, uh, yeah. Maybe a little, yeah, three weeks. I'll say three. Okay. And right. um, I used to live in Germany, so I decided to stay out. Oh, that's right. And I'm just like kind of hanging out. And I, says, I said, you go on, boys. I'm going to stay here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go visit some friends. See you Bye. later. Bye. Okay. No, that actually makes a lot more sense, too. Not that, not that anybody couldn't, but it's like, yeah, it did seem very... I just realized you've been mentioning the German connection the whole time. And it's like, oh, duh. I just forgot about it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And um, now, going to the videos. The it, here's the thing I want to know about. So you have a couple of videos, and that's why I know about Feel It Records because the videos are on the Feel It Records channel. Yeah. And I love the videos; they're great. And also, it's a lot like the uh, the artwork that you were talking about before. There are, I mean, in video, it is actual like you're filming things, but you also have like 2D mixed with 3D sort of elements in it. Plus. Mm -hmm. You have a thing that I love, which is kind of like the closed circuit school television vibe going on mm -hmm. where it's like, here's what's happening this week. And then like a random skateboard slowly <laughs> going across the yeah. screen with like little triangle boxes. Totally. Anyway, so first of all, who uh, who conceptualized the so first video? All of them were done by our friend um, Baba. She received her MFA at SCIC. Um, doing performance and video. So 
that is very much her aesthetic. She's got like, all, she is a, a little encyclopedia of, you know, images and she's like scanning stuff. She'll run footage through, you know, a VHS to get to actually, it's like a real quality rather than some like filter or something. Okay. And she's really interested in like antiquated video technology with, you know. And um, very well. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it, it was a good. Is, yeah, her yeah. stuff is cool. Yeah. And um, we might come in with like a couple of ideas. Sometimes you're just, you'll just like take a word and go with it. And we watch the video. We're like, oh shit, that's cool. Like, you know, I, we just like totally hands off whatever she's trying to do. Oh, all right. You know, it's going to be cool. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much that there. She's awesome. I wonder what she's, surely she's still making work. I should double check. I should have sent that out for you to have her information. Yeah. Yeah, the curious minds. No, I do, actually I do. I have another show that I do that's an artist podcast, and oh. I, I I'd actually kind of like to talk to the person. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone, we're just going to talk business here while we're on the show. No, but I would like to talk to the person and have them on the art show. That would be great. I will definitely pass it along. And anyway, just yeah, her stuff is really cool. So. Yeah, no, I agree. And one of my favorite things uh, was the uh, great. Now I can't remember the names of the videos, but the one where you have like uh, the floating heads. Oh yeah, and all that stuff. So. And what I love is that it still is against white screen. Like there's, there's no, you know, it, I don't know. I just like the it's whole. It's very old. It's like yes. old school on purpose. It's like has a kind of, yeah, a tactility despite it being video. That's what I was trying to, really okay. Cool. That's what I was trying to say. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Like yeah. there's even like the digital shadows, but you didn't make the digital shadows. Mm -hmm. They just kept the shadows in yeah. instead of trying to get rid of it. No, I dug, I dug that one. Uh, yeah, that one's really cool too. And we also took a little of uh, inspo in our like color blocking. There's a, a Lilliput video where everyone's got their own little outfits and they're in like this little white background, but classic kind of like 80s style. Nothing really happens. They're just playing the song. Yeah. So we wanted to have like an aspect of that in our own kind of way. And then we just let Bapa take it from there. So, okay. I mean, the little sheet, the little like floating head thing, that was. Like the last thing we did, and it was when we were taking down the green screen. She was like, "Hang on," she's like, "Just oh, it just wasn't even planned." No, that that was the last thing we did. And I, we watched that happen. I was like, "That is so cool! Look at her go!" I don't <laughs> even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it seems so obvious. And then it became like the intro of the video and yeah, all that. Yeah, totally. and I like how the heads keep switching out. And yeah, no, that's mm -hmm. I can. I'm just gonna sit here and describe the visual video the rest of the show. <laughs> Everyone, close your eyes. We're going on a journey. <laughs> Join me on this <laughs> on this audiobook journey. Um, <laughs> so now you guys also have been releasing vinyl. As a matter of fact, several different pressings. Now mm -hmm. I know so many bands that have gone. We're going to release vinyl, and you know what they have? They have a whole stack of vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> so uh but you guys are doing multiple pressings now you're in i want to see last time i looked it was like your third pressing yeah we're of third vinyl? Press on yeah on our first one okay um yeah that's fine and also i think that also speaks to what sort of feel it's following because they are really they're a vinyl only uh oh they are um well they're very vinyl forward, I should say. So I guess that's a, my question that was going to be after that was, so how are you getting these pressed? But it sounds like that's what they do. Yeah, so it was Sam, it was just an opportunity you got. Yeah, exactly. And you were and just in the right place at the right time. <laughs> in right every place, story. right you, time, right guy. <laughs> oh not God. that it's not talent and, and work, but it's yeah. also like, oh, you bastard. <laughs> oh, I know. And, and the thing is, in some ways, I say I know, but I think in some ways I don't because this is my first band and these are just the ways that it's kind of happened. Oh yeah, know? no, roll so, with it, enjoy it, damn. It's just, I don't know, it might be building up my brat factor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, but okay. yeah. And when you guys get the vinyl, do they deal with it all for you? Are you guys shipping it out? Are you in charge of it? Like, I guess, how does that work too? Yeah, they do, uh, Sam does most, of it we'll ask for you know we'll get boxes so that we can sell them at shows and stuff but okay. by and large sam really takes care of, of all that um yeah okay that's, it. that's sam and the distro and we okay. just let them go over there and do that and like i said we've got our couple boxes 
Okay. Just shove around. Yeah, you've got you've just basically got the merch. You don't have the actual no. like stock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. All right. Um, and then um another reason. So here's also how I found out about you. So I am my band is actually a Creative Commons band, and I am also part of the it's it's called the Creative Commons Music Awards that come out every year. And we just we get sent these different Creative Commons bands from the person that runs it. And I'm one of the judges on it. I didn't I felt like I just rolled my eyes when I said that. I'm not. I actually am really have I learn about it, tons of great music because of it. But I just feel silly saying I'm a judge. It's it seems weird. Don't be, don't be afraid to be an authority of your own opinion. Okay. You, All right. Go ahead. Thank Let's you. Go, you know what? <laughs> Let's applaud the judge for once. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, I appreciate that. And you're right. And I need to stop doing that. It, so basically, that's how I found out about you. And the one of the songs that was nominated was Can't Do, which mm -hmm. I always feel like I'm saying wrong when I say it. Can't Do. And you actually have a great comment from someone in Germany who says they don't know if you're trying to say German or if you are saying German, but they go, but I love it anyway. And it's his favorite song. Yeah. <laughs> he his favorite. I, I remember that. I laughed when I saw that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, she says she's German. She's speaking German. I speak German. I don't hear it, but yeah. That's funny. <laughs> um, and you know, what's also when we were on tour, um, everybody really loved that song too. And, somebody was we were chatting i was chatting with somebody about it and they were like yeah you know over here everyone is trying to sound you know speak in english when you're singing songs and they were like it was actually just refreshing and cool to hear somebody who isn't they didn't grow you know it's not a native german speaker do it because they like the sound of german or like yeah. you know they're trying to say something that isn't in english and they were like yeah they just i don't know i, I get it i appreciate that they appreciate my gesture so. yeah no, it's a good point. There's an actual community, or at least there was a few years back when I spoke to this artist from uh, Russia, and they were an English-speaking, or an English-language punk band. Uh, they did a song called that was bad, called Bad Motherfucker. And oddly enough, right after I spoke to the guy, he went on to direct, have you seen that movie where, a um, little side tangent here, but also it's a nice brag, even though I have nothing to do with it. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, great. Uh, Bob Odenkirk. He did yeah. that one action movie where he was like, it, it was called like missing or something like that. And he plays actually like a guy who is being hunted on the streets and he has to fight for his life. And all this, it's called like missing or something like that. Anyway, this guy went on to direct that movie is That's what it was. Really and he was this, he was, yeah. So anyway, it was a, a song called bad motherfucker, but what, he told us about is there's in Russia, there's really a movement against people trying to do English speaking stuff to get popular because they think that's the only reason they're doing it is so that they can make it into America. Mm -hmm. And so there's a huge like, yeah, just like people are really against a lot of bands that choose to do English speaking lyrics. So there are, there's a whole punk movement where they just do it in Russian. So that that is a real thing. Yeah. Not you know, and and I I only learned about that from this person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, there you go. Well, what I was I really getting is. at. <laughs> <laughs> so getting back to you guys are a Creative Commons band now. When we became one, it was because downloading was the thing. You know, it was when people would download music to share it and put it on MP3 blogs. Then services came around like Spotify where it's like, oh, we don't even need to download this stuff anymore. Sure. Uh, but it still exists. So why did you choose to be a Creative Commons band? Um, because I think that for me to sit here and say, I made this and it's mine <laughs> is short-sighted it hurts the movement of creativity and it denies like my uh, history with language and music and sound that led me to this point right now. You know, it's like, I wouldn't sound who, you know, I wouldn't be here screeching if I'd never, yeah, like if I never heard Lily put before, you know? Right. So for me to like make this music now and pretend that, you know, genius on the, on the hill came up with it all by herself. It's just, I just don't think that that is an appropriate way to foster creativity mm -hmm. or to have the next generation 
or even this one who's just like casually trying to find a hobby or something to do mm -hmm. you know like we should be able to share what bits we have with other people that's what i think mm -hmm. and um yeah that's, I, that's that that was like the main basis because actually i never asked the boys i just did that oh yeah. really i was like you know what i've got my own little hill this is what i'm gonna do you hmm. know what if some kid wants to sample some of our music i'm not you know go ahead I want yeah. to do it, you know so i'll tell you it's it's kind of a benefit too because um because of doing it our stuff is in things that i just hear about like our our stuff is in um games and different types of uh, like Twitch people will use it while they play. A lot of it has to do with video games, but mm -hmm. some of them have been in like independent films and things like that. And it's just because they're able to use it and it's real music rather than just the stock music that people will allow you to use royalty for. Right. So right. it's, yeah, there's, it there, is, there are benefits to it. Yeah, the greed hurts us all. So if we care a little bit less about money and we just let people be creative in a way that isn't, you know, hurting others. I think that it's not, you know, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a net benefit for all. So. And I'm, I enjoy that you also connected that to like with artwork and stuff, because I have this conversation with artists and it's, it kind of skews in the other direction a lot. Uh, there's a lot of worry about stealing work, but a lot of the learning from art comes from studying and mimicking and learning from other artists, which is essentially what, Creative Commons is, is it's building upon remixing, reusing, and mm -hmm. making something. I mean, that's that's what that's the argument too, is all you know, artistry is all just kind of stealing from the previous person and putting your own spin on it sure. in a broad way anyway, of saying it. But I will say the I for me, the difference is, you know, like music, it's thousands of things put together that you can sort of, you know find that point where maybe an art piece it is it's sort of its own monolith so it's more obvious like hey you just copied my painting or you know like hey right. you uh totally lifted this des this design mirrors you know anyway but so technique I think that is stuff. easier because you can have a one-to-one -one comparison however yeah like the building of the skills you know that instagram Lady, she didn't invent pottery. You know what I mean. So right. we need it, we just have to be more thoughtful. And I think sometimes people get so excited, especially with visual art, they might be a little bit too cavalier because in the end, you know, um, there's more avenues to make uh, to do more with music than necessarily fine art. You know, like mm -hmm. if you spend like a year on a painting and then someone lifts it and then just like makes a digital print and sells it, you're like, well dang it, you know, I don't get paid for it. I don't get paid for my knowledge and my time. And now some knockoff, you know, like putting it on mugs and shit. So. Yeah. Well, it's, and that, that right just, there is also just flat out stealing. That's that, just lifting. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also with creative commons, you're saying you can do this, but like with us, you choose the, if I'm not mistaken, the non-commercial. Uh, so people can't just go and use it for something commercially for free, which that's, that's a version of it. We do the, um, you can use it, but share alike, meaning like, sure, you can use it commercially, but you also have to put it under the creative commons license. Meaning that if you do that, then I can take what you made out of it and use that for my own purposes or oh, okay. remix it or rebrand. So I do it that way as well. And if they just release it commercially, then it's like, well, we got a problem here because you went against the license, you know, mm. it's, so there's there's that okay. as well. So it but there's there's an argument for both. The, the actually a net label that we released a an EP on, he only releases under non derivs uh, or non commercial. Sorry. Uh, so th there's yeah there's argument for both. And also <laughs> releasing under non commercial is a lot easier when it comes to copyright claims on <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, the other oh, yeah. thing that can happen too is we've had companies just basically go. Oh, this music's under Creative Commons. I basically know one thing about Creative Commons and that you can use it for free. So they go, we're going to take this music and claim it's ours, put it on a label, and then have people then take it down from other people and charge them for it. Like we've had that happen to us. No way. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Can, yeah, that's a thing, man. Greed. The greed's the real cancer. Yes. In exactly. the world. <laughs> but anyway, so that is, so there, so that's interesting to know that you chose that. I like that. That's that's 
That's a that's a nice thing to know. That's yeah, cool. That's for me to you. So with all the stuff that you guys do, um, you've got the I mean, you've got the band camp page. Uh, why no website? I'm curious. Well, actually, I think that this summer I'm going to try and build a website. Oh, OK. It'll be, you know, nods to Barbara's sort of like pre post net aesthetic. You know, I want each page to sort of read like its own art feature. So oh. I'm going to be learning coding so that I can <laughs> make it whatever I want. <laughs> OK. But yeah, I'm actually pretty excited about that. It'll be, I'm, I'm looking to incorporate more like, yeah, like poetry or like words to this kind of punk sound and whatever as a page. It's still, it's up here. I can't talk about it because it's still right. I get it. Loading, but yeah. it's happening. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Nice. And you haven't coded before. Oh, like little bits, you know. And okay. but it's that's one of those things you can forget. You, know, you can unlearn that in like a day. You know, you right. sit down. And you're like, oh, how do I split the screen? I'm like, you know, carrot div carrot. I'm like, ah, oh, frick, I don't remember. Right. But um, I'll, I I I could patch it up. I got a book here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. It's I'll pick fun. it up as I go along. Sometimes Key of B flat, follow me for the changes. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man. And then, um, so before we go today, what are some of the things that you have coming up, things you'd like to tell people about that are coming up in the future? Well, the big thing coming up is we are working on our new album. And so it's coming, we're, it's chugging along, but hopefully we'll be able to record sometime this year. Well, definitely in this year, 24. So that'll be happening. Do you guys self-produce or are you, we, do you go into a studio? We go into a studio. Um, we've got some friends down at Jam Deck here in Chicago and uh, Doug Malone, he's the best. He like gets it. He's got a great ear. And so we've done our lot, our, our, Two albums were always with him and we're excited to work with him again okay he's got, i mean i don't know anything about like recording music but he he's got these like big beautiful you know old school ones you see him kind of like gets it going kind okay of thing, whatever to give us that kind of rich yeah early 80s sound that we appreciate so much so don't mess with a good thing right yeah <laughs> so yeah okay. we'll definitely be going back to him and otherwise, I don't know, a couple cool shows coming up. Uh, what do we got? Cullate, uh, Clickbait, and Grandma's Boy playing at Sleeping Village in April okay. 20th. And then sometime this summer, I think July 20th, um, our friends Big Clown from Memphis are coming name. up and we are going to have a DIY show for the gods. So oh. place TBA, <laughs> but okay. it, it's coming together and it will be awesome. So I love that you're already planning into the summer. That's, uh, yeah, if, if they reach I barely out, know what we're going to do next month, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, Lucy reached out. So she, I guess she is trying to get a little tour planned for okay. big clown. And I said, you know what? I'll take care of this one for you. Yeah. It helps to have your friends all over, you know, as long as we're all helping each other, then it keeps moving. Yeah. So. All right. And then uh, if people wanted to check out your music, where should they go do that? Easiest one would probably be our band camp, spreadjoy.bandcamp.com. I know. I always forget if it's before or after <laughs> the URL. <laughs> no, for Pete's sake. But yeah, that's a good one. Might as well. Otherwise, we got our entire albums are ripped all up and down on YouTube. So go right ahead and do that. I caution against Spotify because, but <laughs> that's my own business. Sorry, right. Um, But yeah, anywhere you want. All right. We've got some bootleg tapes out there too. Hopefully you can find some oh, of those. Nice. Oh yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. It was great meeting you. Thank you. It was so fun to chat. Mm.